بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين جزاكم الله خير everyone number one thank you to the masjid thank you to the masjid for allowing us last minute to give this talk so we just want to number one say Thank you to the masjid for this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them with their appeal and their campaign um, with, what they're, you know, with what they're doing. So inshallah ta'ala, may Allah first and foremost reward the management of the masjid who allowed us to come here uh, in very short notice. Um, so inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to be speaking about briefly is iman and knowledge. So knowledge and iman. So, as we all know, we're all Muslims here, we all have Iman in the religion of Islam, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in his commands, we believe in what he sent to us. And regarding Iman, the ulama speak about this word Iman and Al-Islam. Iman and Islam. That Iman can mean Islam and Islam can mean Iman. When they're said separately, okay? When they're said separately, they mean the same thing. And when they're mentioned together, they mean two different things, okay? As the ulama say. So, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, speaks about, you know, uh, 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 he guides them to al-iman in the Quran, for example, okay? Um, i.e. he has guided the Muslims to Al-Islam and also if a person was to say for example I have my Islam is weak he means my Iman is weak so there are times when Iman and Islam can mean the same thing i.e. Uh, if they're mentioned separate from one another however when they're, when they're mentioned together they mean two different things I will know this from the Hadith of Jibreel when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was with his companions, the famous hadith of uh, Ibn uh, of Umar radiallahu anhu of Umar, um, and you can find it in Sahih Muslim, or you can find it in, for example, the fourth hadith of Imam Nawawi or something like that, the second hadith. So, for example, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting, and Umar was narrating a story, and he said. بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم. One day we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, one day, okay, one particular day. And then he said, إذ إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد السواد الشعري. That a person came from in the horizon in the distance. إذ طلع علينا رجل. So. Yeah, if you look at the wording of Umar, he didn't say إِذْ أَتَانَا رَجُلْ or إِذْ جَاءَ رَجُلْ He said طَلَعَ عَلَيْنَا رَجُلْ The same way, for example, and I'll get to why this word طُلُوعْ or طَلَعَ means you can, you, can describe, you can describe the situation. When we say, or when a person speaks Arabic, or anyone who learns Arabic, when you say the sun comes up, you say طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ meaning it comes up gradually. So إِذْ طَلَعَ عَلَيْنَا رَجُلٌ A man came Gradually he came closer to us. We could see him in the horizon. Shadidu bayadu thiyab. His thobe was completely white. Shadidu sawad al sha'ri. And his hair was very black. Anyone who comes from a desert environment or an environment where there isn't a lot of concrete and the place isn't developed, you'll know that if you're in the desert for a day or a day or two, for a white thobe, okay? or for a white jalabiya, for anything that you're wearing that is white, or shalwa khamis, or whatever it is, if you're to wear something which is purely white and you're traveling, it's a strange thing. Eventually it will become brown or colored because of you're traveling with a camel, you're traveling, you know, through the desert. So it's going to affect your clothing. You're sweating, it's hot. It's طلع علينا رجلا شديد بياض الثياب شديد السواد الشعري even his, his hair was extremely black. Yani. He wasn't disheveled. It wasn't filled with like dust or anything. And then Umar said, 
la yura alayhi athru safari on this particular man there was no sign of travel there was no sign of this man ever traveling so he just came يعني, out of nowhere where did this man come from wala ya'rifuhu minna ahadun none of us knew who he was who he was very mysterious man okay um, so then you know la yura la ya'rifuhu hatta jalasa ila an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he sat with the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sat down with him okay fa asnada rukbatayhi ila rukbatayhi he put his knees right next to him. Mashallah, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's knees sat right next to him. Okay. وَوَضَعَ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَىٰ فَخِذَيْهِ And then he put his kaf. His kaf is like this, the palm of his hand. عَلَىٰ فَخِذَيْهِ On the thigh of the Mashallah, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, يَا مُحَمَّدُ O Muhammad, أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ Tell me about al-Islam. This was, so he asked him a very simple question. And then the Mashallah, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-Islam and Tashada and La ilaha illallah who and the Muhammad Rasulullah is to testify there's no good worthy worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his is his messenger. What to qeem was salah for you to establish the prayer. What took to zakat and to give the zakat or for tuti zakat. What to sum what to sum Ramadan and to and to fast in the month of Ramadan. What to hudj al bayta in istata'ata ilayhi sabila or for you to make hajj to uh, uh, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're able to do it. And then out of nowhere, what did the man say? Qala sadaqt. He said, you told the truth. And then Umar, he was, the, the companions were amazed. They said, fa'ajibna lahu. We were amazed at what this man is saying. Fa'ajibna lahu. Yani, we're amazed. How can you, yani, you're saying sadaqt to Prophet And then what did Umar say? Yes'aluhu wa yusaddiquhu. He's asking the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a question. And then he's saying to him, you told the truth. This is very strange. Imagine that. You're with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Somebody comes to ask him a question. And then you say to him, you're, you're correct. Imagine now, for example, all of you here, or many of you here, you're in university. Imagine if you ask your professor a question. You're an undergraduate student. And you're asking your, your, your professor a question that a PhD holder will ask. He answers the question, you say, you're right. The professor, the professor is going to say, of course I'm right. Yeah, and you, 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 do you understand? It's very strange. So then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ Tell us about Iman. So, like I said just before, Islam was the five pillars for you to believe in Allah, okay, for you to pray, for you to fast, for you to go to hajj, for you to give zakat. These are, if you like, actions of the limbs. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then the man said, tell us about Iman. And Iman is obviously faith in the heart. And the Prophet ﷺ, Al-Iman huwa an tu'mina billahi is for a person to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa malaikatihi and his angels uh, wa kutubihi and his books wa rusuli and his messengers wal yawm al-akhir and for you to believe in the last day i.e. yawm al-qiyamah wa an tu'mina bil-qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi and for you to believe in uh, 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 destiny. Things were always going to happen the way they were going to be. Destiny. Khayrihi wa sharrihi. The good of it and the bad of it. Because life is not easy. A person can go through difficult times. A person can go through easy times. So when you go through the good, the good times, a person says khayrihi, we accept it. And then when we go through difficult times, wa sharrihi, difficult times, we accept it. So this is Iman. Iman is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his messengers, and things like that. But, we, as we know, when we're speaking about our Iman, generally speaking, we're speaking about the actions of the heart, generally speaking. So if a person has high Iman, then the actions of the heart will have an effect on their limbs. If you have high Iman, you're going to pray on time. If you have high iman, you're going to stay away from haram. If you have high iman, you're not going to do X, Y, Z, which is haram. We all know that. Okay? Which is why the Prophet ﷺ said, La yazni zani hina yazni wa huwa mu'min. person who does zina, who does haram, he, when, he does, when he does haram, he doesn't have iman when he's doing that deed. He doesn't have iman when he's doing that particular deed. 
It doesn't mean this person is a kafir, no. This nafi, this negation is nafiul kamal. It's a negation of perfect iman. Meaning that when you do the sin, perfection of your iman has gone away. You're still a mu'min or you still believe in Allah, but perfect iman is not there. So now the question is, how does a person gain strong iman and what's that relation to an everyday kind of Muslim? How can we perfect our iman to the point where يعني, we can stay away from muharramah, from things which are haram, we can stay away from bad deeds. Ilm is one thing, ilm, to have knowledge, okay, to have knowledge of your religion. When you have knowledge of your religion, then, afwan, when you have knowledge of your religion, ilm, okay, uh, when you have ilm, then you can, for example, understand situations that a person with ilm might not understand. You can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on uh, clarity. If a person doesn't have ilm, then a person is prone to shubuhat, doubts, shahawat, uh, 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 temptations. So how does ilm, how does ilm allow us to protect our religion and protect our iman? Number one, a person, if we start from ground zero, what is ilm? If I was to ask a definition, what is ilm? What is knowledge? The ulama state that ilm is ma'arifatu shay ala ma hu alayh. It's for you to understand a particular thing the way it should be understood. Ma'arifatu shay ala ma hu alayh. For a person to understand something properly. If a person doesn't understand something properly, then it's going to be difficult for them to implement something properly. So now when it comes to driving a car, if a person wants to drive a car, if a person does not understand, for example, how to drive, what a car is, does it have a gearbox, can you move it, can you not move it, it's going to be difficult for him to drive. He has to understand what is he going to do. So likewise, when it comes to Al-Islam, we need to understand our religion properly. We need to understand our religion properly. Which is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُوا بِهِ عِلْمًا سَهَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever seeks a path, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا Whoever treads a path, يَلْتَمِسُوا بِهِ عِلْمًا Okay, by that he's intending to get ilm. Allah will make his path to Jannah easy. The question is, what kind of ilm is this? What kind of ilm is this? The ilm that we're talking about when the ulama say ilm, knowledge, we're talking about knowledge of the sharia, knowledge of halal, knowledge of haram. Okay, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to, for example, saying the hadith, A'lamukum. Bilhalali wal haram mu'adim jabal. That the most knowledgeable of you all of haram, of halal and haram, what's permissible, what's, what's halal for you, and what's not permissible for you is mu'adim jabal. So now, when it comes to a daily and everyday Muslim, what should that person know? Number one, that person needs to know who their Lord is, who their Rabb is, who their Lord is. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah said in the Quran فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. So we need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, for example. We need to know who we're praying to. We need to know why we're praying to Allah. For example, we need to know why we're here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've not created mankind or the jinn kind except to worship me. So we know now, for example, that the reason why we're here is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason why we're here. Once we understand why we're here, we can act accordingly. But when a person doesn't even know why they're here, it's going to be problems. It's going to be problems. Which is why, yeah, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ we have sent to every single nation, every single group of people, a messenger, a rasul, an Allah, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what else? And to stay away from anything that should not be 
worship that should not be idolized in any way shape or form so the prophet so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us messengers but now obviously we know that with our in our in our religion okay the prophet said la nabiyya min ba'di there is no messenger after me because with previous nations you would have a you would have a nabi who was also a rasul so a nabi and a rasul are two different things Every Nabi, every Rasul is a Nabi, but, every, but not every Nabi is a Rasul. What does that mean? A Rasul is someone who has a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and revelation. So a person can be a prophet, but not a messenger. But every messenger is a prophet. So, Ulul Azm min al Rusul, the five major messengers were who? Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa and Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. These five were prophets and messengers. But then, if you look at, for example, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, they had, they had prophets, but they weren't sometimes messengers. So in the time of a, so when a prophet was alive, or when a messenger was alive, there could be a prophet. An example is Isa ibn Maryam. When Isa ibn Maryam was alive, he was a messenger. There were other prophets alive with him, like Yahya. Yahya was alive. Before Yahya was around, Zakaria was alive. So there were times when prophets, several prophets will be alive. What was, this, what was the need of that prophet? What was that prophet there for? That prophet was there to revive the message of the, of the messenger. To teach the people what they didn't know. So, for example, um, after Musa alayhi salam, who had the Torah, many, many prophets came after Musa alayhi salam. Many prophets, okay? But uh, from them, for example, Dawood, Sulaiman, all of these prophets came, okay, after Musa. Now, what was the job of those people, to those, messenger, those prophets? Like I said, to teach, يعني, to do tajdeed of the religion. In Islam, there's no prophet after the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no prophet. There's no prophet. So, what is, what is our version of these, of these anbiya, of these other people who would come and revive the previous uh, 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 revelation of their, of their messengers? We have ulama, we have scholars. Which is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-ulama waratatul anbiya. That scholars are the inheritors of prophets. They don't inherit wealth, they don't inherit land, they don't inherit this, they inherit knowledge. So now, when it comes to us as Muslims, like I said, what do we need to know? Number one, we need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He's our Lord, He's our provider, He's our sustainer. We pray to nobody but Him, okay? وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا to, pr- to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to uh, worship anything except Him, for example. To pray the salawat. Okay, when I pray my salah, how do I pray my salah? When do I pray my salah, for example? Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا That salah is a prescribed time. How do we pray? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for example, Sallu kama ra'itumuni usalli. Pray the way you see me pray, for example. Okay, when it comes now, for example, to, uh, what do you call it? Pray, uh, 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 when it comes to leading the salawat, if we're in a group of people, who leads us in salah? We go back to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us. La ummukum aqra'akum li kitabillah. The person who leads you in salah is a person with the, with the what do you call it? With the, with the most knowledge of the Qur'an, for example. When, for example, somebody does a particular action, what is the result of that particular thing? You need to have knowledge in order to know these things. I'll give you an example. Even in the time of the companions. In the time of the companions, when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was alive, sometimes يعني, not every single person, not every companion would have knowledge. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent one sahabi out. Khalas, he went out. He went out to, uh, to, on, 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 a, on, a, on a task for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Went out into the desert. This sahabi, he was out in the desert for a few days. 
he became junub, meaning that he became in a state of ritual impurity. He had, if you like, a wet dream or something like that. He didn't know what to do. The Sahaba, he did not know what to do. So he remembered, ah, if I need to, what do you call it? Um, um, do, 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 um, if, I, if, I, if I fall into a state of being junub, I need to do tahara, I need to do ghusl. So what did he do? He rolled around in the sand and covered his whole body because he didn't know what to do. He came back to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he told the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what he did. What did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He didn't rebuke him, he didn't shout at him, he answered in a way with akhlaq. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You, Messenger of Allah, oh you, oh Muhammad, you have great manners. So he didn't shout at the person. He said to him, إِنَّمَا يَكْفِيكَ أَن تَقُولَ بِيَدِكَ هَكَذَا All you had to do was this. And he taught him how to do, uh, uh, what do you call it, how to do tayammum. Meaning that if you're out in the desert, all you need to do is tayammum with your hands and your face. You don't need to roll all your body in, 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 in the sand, for example. Another example of why we need knowledge. What happened? We, you all know the story. An Arabi came. An Arabi came. A Bedouin person. فَبَالَ فِي طَائِفَةِ الْمَسْجِدِ he came to the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He didn't come to learn for, uh, He didn't come and sit into the, to the circle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He didn't read Quran, he didn't do any of that stuff He came in and he urinated in the Masjid In a corner of the Masjid, came and urinated him Urinated the Masjid Okay um, And then what? فَزَجْرَهُ nas. The people rebuked him. What are you doing? You're coming to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're urinating. What is this? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, leave him. And they ordered it to be cleaned with water and things like that. But what we're trying to say is that this person, he couldn't read, he couldn't write. He was an Arabi. He was an ignorant person. Okay? He was an ignorant person. And then he said in some of the reports, may Allah have rahmah on none of you except for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they all, they all rebuked him. So this is why we need ilm, we need knowledge, because if we have knowledge, we'll know how to move around in our life. So even today, for example, right now in the society that we live in, for example, there are many shubuhat, there are many doubts, there are many shahwat, there are many temptations. What's those things that are going to stay, keep you away from these temptations? It's knowledge, it's ilm. But obviously it's not just ilm, it's ilm wal amal, it's knowledge and action, okay? It's not just, uh, what do you call it, no, uh, no action and all ilm, no, it's knowledge and action. So for example, if a person wants to get married, if a person wants to get married, he does not understand how to get married. How do you go around getting married? If you have no ilm, how can you get married, for example? If you don't know the rights of the wife, you don't know the haqq uh, al-zawja ala zawj or haqq al-zawja ala zawja. You don't know the rights of your husband upon wife, wife upon husband. How can you get married, for example? So knowledge is very, very important. When there's shiqaq, when there is, for example, um, separation between the two, how do you make sulh, for example? If different Muslims are fighting one another, if there's issues going on between Muslims, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to create more fitna or are we supposed to bring Muslims together? Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَكُمْ بَيْنَهُمَا That if two groups of Muslims fight, do islah between them, for example. So, and you can only do islah if you have knowledge. When it comes to zakat, for example, paying the zakat at the end of every year, Islamic calendar, how do you pay zakat? Some people are living their entire life, they don't even know that zakat is wajib upon them. They don't know they have to pay the zakat. Some people live their entire life, they don't know that hajj is wajib upon him, upon them. Okay? Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, has made it upon the people for them to make hajj, if they have the ability to go to do hajj. How do you do hajj? Is Hajj something that you do when you're 70 years old? Or is Hajj do something you do when you're young, able-bodied, for example? So when you look at your entire life, ilm 
Ilm is what's going to keep your iman high because you're going to know what to do in particular situations. And the ilm is also going to help you in your daily life because it's going to take away, for example, um, waswas, whispering. A lot of people have issues, for example, even with things like waswas. How many questions do I get asked with people when it comes to doing wudu? They have issues. When it comes to people praying the salawat, they have issues with waswas. Imagine waswas. They think, if I pray my salat, is my salah correct or is it not correct? And then they'll pray again. Then they'll do wudu again 20 times, 30 times. I think I broke my wudu and my salah. And then he goes and does wudu again. Even though the Prophet وسلم, if you have ilm or if a person has ilm, there's a solution. The Prophet said, فَلَا يَخْرُجَنَّ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ صَوْتًا أَوْ يَجِدُ رِيحًا Okay, if a person is in the prayer and he feels as if something is in his stomach, أَخَّرَجَ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا أَمْ لَا He thinks to himself, did something leave me or did something not leave me? Did I pass wind or not? The Prophet said, فَلَا يَخْرُجَنَّ أَوْ فَلَا يَنْصَرِفْ Let him not turn around حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ صَوْتًا Until he hears the noise of either him passing wind أَوْ يَجِدُ رِيحًا Or he smells a smell. What do we even get from that? The ulama say you can derive a ruling That when you have certainty in something So you're certain that you did wudu Then by you just having doubt Did I do wudu? The doubt doesn't affect The doubt never ever affects certainty Certainty and doubt are two different levels of what? Of comprehension Or of um, affirmation if you are 100% sure that something happened and 50% sure that something else happened, then you go with the 100%. Okay? They only follow dhan. Okay? And what's, does anyone know the rest of the ayah? What? It can never ever, it can never take away from haqq. It can never enrich the haqq. Haqq is haqq and dhan is just... It's just something you're thinking about. So even when it comes to ilm, ilm can help you in your entire life. So if you're a businessman, learn the fiqh of how you do business. If, for example, you want um, to study in a particular thing, is that thing that you're studying haram or halal? If you want to get married, is what you're doing halal or haram when it comes to getting married? Knowledge will help you as a Muslim. Now, the title was Knowledge and Iman. Al Imanu Yazidu wa Yanqus. It goes up and it goes down. If you do good deeds, your Iman will go up. If you do bad deeds, your Iman will go down. But there's a question. When it comes now to trying to gain Iman, you want to gain Istiqama. That's what you want. Istiqama is different from just having high iman You can listen to this talk today and have high iman Or you feel on a high But the question is If you want your Islam to be with you for your entire life You need to gain something known as Al-istiqama To be upright For Islam to be in your bones every single day Allah said Inna alladheena qalu Rabbuna allahu thumma istiqamu Tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaikatu an la takhafu that those who say we believe in Allah and they have istiqama, they have istiqama, they're upright, then when it's time for them, Allah, to, to take their lives away, the malaik will come to that person and say, Don't be, don't be sad, don't be scared, and don't be sad, and be glad. With the Jannah that you've been promised. And then Allah says, and then they said, Nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayati dunya wa fil akhira. That we were with you, that we're going to be with you, we are awliya in the dunya and even in the, in the what you call it, in the afterlife will be there. So, what's, how do you gain istiqama? What is istiqama? Istiqama is being upright on the religion. That's different from, you know, feeling high, feeling low. It's about being upright. Okay. One person came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya, ya, he said, um, he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, 
قل لي قولا في الاسلام لا اسال احدا غيره say to me a statement in al islam i don't i cannot ask anyone but you only you can answer it the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him an answer and that answer that answer is a short answer it's not a long answer and this comes from what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had which is known as jawami'ul kalim concise speech it's very small what he said but from that you can you can speak about what he said for days it's just one sentence but you can talk about it it means so much it, despite its brevity it means so so much what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he said qul amantu billahi thumma istaqim he said say i believe in allah and have istiqama be firm how does that what does that mean that means that for your entire life you're going to serve the religion of al-islam for your entire life you're going to pray for your entire life you're not going to commit shirk with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your entire life you're going to give sadaqah for your entire life you're going to be a practicing muslim allah said in the quran qul inna salati say my salah wa nusuki my sacrifice i.e the religious sacrifice wa mahyaya my life wa mamati and my death lillahi rabbil alamin la sharika la is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no partners with him so in order for a person to gain high iman you need to gain istiqama you need to be upright in your religion so when it comes to practicing al-islam you need to look at it as a marathon and not a quick run who obviously you, you know mashallah maybe many of you play sports you know that for example a person who runs a, uh, what do you call it, 100 meters. It's, it's only 100 meters. So you have to run as fast as you can in the shortest amount of time, 100 meters, quickly. And then you've got people who, now they run marathons, 1,000 meters or 10,000 meters. They don't run at the same pace, do they? The people who run the 100 meters, it's a quick burst of energy. The people who run 10,000 meters, they run slowly but they're able to conserve all of their energy but they run slowly what does that mean when it comes to al-islam and you want to live and follow al-islam you have to follow it slowly you have to follow it step by step you have to you have to walk before you can run shay'an for shay'an ruwaydan ruwaydan bit by bit a man came to Allah وسلم, he said ara'ayta idha sallaytu al-maktubat Oh, Mr. Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you see if I pray what Allah, the, the, the five daily prayers only? Okay, and then he said, Wa asumur Ramadan. And, you know, I, I, I pray in the month of Ramadan. And then he said, Wa ahlaltul halal, wa ahramtul haram. I make what is halal halal, and I make what's haram haram. And then he said something of the lines, Wa lam azid ala thalika shay'a. And I don't do anything more than that. I do khurul jannah, ula anta jannah. Prophet said, Naam. Meaning, if you just pray your salawat on time, you fast, you learn about who Allah is, you learn the basis of your basics of your religion, and you take it step by step and build on it incrementally, you'll enter Al Jannah. What you don't want is to do everything at once and then fall off. So, now, when it comes to having high Iman, Make Islam your life. Make your Islam your entire life. Waking up, you're thinking about Islam. When Dhuhr comes, you're waking about. You're thinking about Islam. When Asr comes, you're thinking about Islam. Every single thing you're doing, you're thinking about Islam. That's how it should be. That's how Muslims should be. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم. Those people that they remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala قياما standing. وَقُعُودًا سِتٍ وَعَلَى جُنُوبٍ Even lying down, the thing about Allah. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They're thinking, look at, how, look at this dunya, look at the samawat, look at the heavens, and look at the earth. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سبحانك. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you didn't make this in falsehood. So many ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks about. Another thing, for example, when it comes to ilm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-akhillah yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'dhin aduun illa al-muttaqeen. 
best friends in this dunya. Best friends in the dunya. Al-Akhilla. What's Akhilla? Akhilla is the plural. It's the jam of the word Khalil. Best friend. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, best friends are going to be enemies. Except illa al muttaqin Except for people that their best friends were in, were in religion, were in taqwa. So if your friend is a friend that helps you worship Allah, is your friend in religion, then insha'Allah ta'ala, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you're not going to be, he's not going to be your adu. However, if your friend, for example, is a person who doesn't show you the way, the sirat al-mustaqeem, then he's not going to be your friend in Yawm Al-Qiyam, he's going to be your adu. So now you have to think about ilm, knowledge in your head. You have to ask yourself a question. If I keep so-and-so as my friend, he's doing haram, he's doing this, will he help me get to al-jannah? If he's not, you have, to, you have to make a decision, you have to make a judgment call. But this is ilm, ilm will allow you to think, you have to think critically. Okay? And then, by doing that, removing obstacles, this is how you gain istiqama. You facilitate Islam around your life. And you don't, uh, uh, Islam is your entire life. You facilitate your entire life around Islam, and you don't fit al-Islam in time in, in your life. So a difference. If Islam is your, is your entire life, then salah is not an issue, for example. If Islam is your entire life, salah is not an issue. Wherever you are, you pray. Allah, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, wa tahura. Allah made this whole dunya a masjid and it's pure and tahur. Meaning that if you're just walking somewhere, it's time for Salat al-Asr. I'm not saying to you now, pray in the main road in front of everyone. But let's say you have nowhere to pray. You can find a quiet place, pray your salah. Salam alaikum. Because you have ilm and you've made your life around al-Islam. You're going to wait now until the time goes and after you pray salawat. Or if you're sick and you can't pray and you're in pain, you don't have to force yourself to stand up and pray. You can pray on a chair, for example. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, said, Salli qa'iman. Pray standing. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ If you can't, فَقَاعِدًا Then sit down. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ If you can't, فَعَلَى الْجَمْ Then pray lying down if you can't do that. So one, if you look at what the Prophet is saying, he's giving you a solution for every single person. The healthy person can stand. The person who's maybe got a bit of a joint pain or ailment, he can sit. And the person who's maybe chronically ill, he can, he can, what do you call it, he can pray lying down. But what's the shahid? What's the, look, think about the mas'ala. Islam can be practiced by everyone. Everyone. So this is the shahid. If you can make Islam a part of your entire life, with balance, by the way, not imbalance. I'm not asking to be extreme. Balance. I'm not saying Allah said, "Wala tansa nasiba kum min dunya." Don't forget your hadh, your share of this world. I'm not saying go and don't live in the dunya. No, I'm saying balance. Once you find that balance, your iman will get higher. Allah will put barakah in your rizq. Allah will put barakah in your children. Allah will put barakah in your life. Shallahu taala. Okay. Um, and insha'Allah ta'ala, your iman will, 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 will rise. You read the Qur'an, you pray qiyamul layl, you give sadaqah, and you do what's easy for you, for example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up and make things easy for you. What did Allah say in the Qur'an? وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make a way out. وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And he will give him risk from places where he will never imagine. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whoever uh, 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 has tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is, he's enough for him. I remember one time, for example, I'll give you a story. I was flying to a particular country, a Muslim country, but I had to go there for, I had to go there quickly. And my wallet was lost. I lost my wallet. It had everything. I had my license. It had my ID. I had everything in it. I lost even my bank card. I lost my bank card. By the time I got to Heathrow Airport, I realized everything is gone. The only thing I had was a five pound note. And I was starving. I went to Costa, I got the pasta, yani, the broccoli, whatever it is, the cheese, cheese pasta. That's all I had. I had nothing. I just had this, I just knew that the, the, the country that I'm going to, there's free internet in the airport. 
I have nothing. Wallah, everything's gone. Even my wallet, everything. But I know that the Muslim country I'm going to, they're Muslim. So even though it's the airport, because it's a Muslim country, you can, you can talk to people. It's not like the UK where everything is 100% by the book. I know that the Muslim people, if I just... So I arrive at that country with nothing but my passport. So I went to... Uh, uh, can you imagine? <laughs> Uh, what do you call it? I, I pass through the immigration. They stamped my thing. And then, um, um, you know when they're looking at your bags, the what do you call, security? They're looking through my bag. I said to them, I said to them, I said, no, Sheikh. I said, I'm coming from the UK. I showed my passport. I said, listen, where I came from, every, I lost everything. I don't have anything, a penny. I don't even have a taxi to get to my destination. I have nothing. I said, look, Sheikh, give me something so I can, so I can get from A to B. I have someone that I'm going to meet. In the city that I was in, just give me money so I can catch a taxi for them. Just yeah, I need money for a taxi, nothing else. MashaAllah. What did he do? He pretended to look at the passport, went into a room, put money in the passport, gave him a passport, and just let's say, khalas, go salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. In Muslim country, alhamdulillah, it's khayr. You know, here I would have been suffering, I don't know what I'd have to do. But the shahid is that, I'm not saying I have taqwa, but when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll find yourself in situations. And Allah will help you in difficult situations when you have nothing. Allah will help you. Okay? What does Allah say in the Quran? In Tansurullaha Yansurkum wa Yuthabit Aqdamakum. That if you uh, what do you call it? If you uh, give victory to Allah, if you aid his religion, Yansurkum, he will aid you. Wa Yuthabit Aqdamakum. Now, look at this. Allah says, In Tansurullah Yansurkum. In the Arabic language, this is a Jumla shartiyya. This is a conditional sentence. It's a jumla shartiyya. It's a clausal sentence, conditional sentence. Meaning that if you want Allah to help you, you have to help Him. There's a condition, there's a shart. In tansurullah yansurkum. If you help Allah, Allah will help Him. What do you understand from that? If you don't aid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, you won't get help from Him. You will only get help if you help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. So if you don't have, if you don't aid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, you won't get help. I remember a jahil, a jahil cab driver picked me up one day in London. Again, I was coming back from Heathrow Airport, another Heathrow Airport story, but this time I was in London. So I had some um, currency from the country that I was coming back from. I needed to change the money. So... It was, a, I think it was a Sunday, but it was because obviously it's a Muslim, Muslim, they work on Sundays. I went to go and change the money. Every area, like near Edgeware Road, it's a place with a lot of Muslims. Everywhere was closed. Only Everywhere was closed, right? The cab driver he took me there. I got off. I got off the car. I found everywhere was closed. So I used Uber again. I said, and I, and I found a shop. And then after maybe 10 minutes away, I jumped in the same cab again. He took me to the place. So I said, Alhamdulillah, he's Muslim himself, so he's talking to me, I said, Alhamdulillah, I said, Sheikh, I said, everywhere I go, I said to him, every time I find myself in a predicament, in a difficult situation, Allah always helps me, that's what I said to him. And he said to me, MashaAllah, you're one of the lucky ones. Hey, Sheikh, what kind of kalam is this? You're one of the lucky ones, and there's khalil in your Islam. There's something wrong in your Islam. If you, does that happen to you? What kind of jahil kalam? You're one of the lucky ones. What kind of kalam is this? A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Even a mu'min with no money, he'll never say this kind of kalam. Look at this um, tatawul. He thinks he's... And what kind of person will say that? If he says that, then he's not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his haqq. Because if you give Allah his haqq, Allah will always help you. You will never be left behind. And I'm sure all of you have stories like similar to mine where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped you. So the shahid is, we don't want to take your time too long. The, 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 the shahid is that, or what we're trying to speak about is that, believe in Allah, follow his message, follow the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the Quran. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْرَةٌ حَسَنًا Follow his example. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has the best example. Follow his religion. Okay, and if you don't know anything, if you defend anything, go back to Allah and His Messenger. Meaning, if go back to Him when He's alive, if He's alive, now that He's dead, go back to His, go back to the Quran, go back to the Sunnah, see what the scholars say, and follow His example. Have ilm, and Insha Allah Taala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will guide you to Al Islam, 
Allah will give you good iman and inshallah ta'ala you will live a hayatin kareema and on a lovely good honest life inshallah ta'ala oh, we're not going to take you too long we'll open the floor just for a few questions and then inshallah ta'ala you know we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys go inshallah ta'ala barakallahu feekum does anyone have any questions inshallah ta'ala somebody must have something once somebody asks everyone will start asking i'm tafaddal Okay, so Hajj A person must do Hajj Umar and Hajj are separate But, okay, so Umar and Hajj are separate Naam Allah says in the Quran Complete Hajj and Umrah But, Naam, Hajj, hajj is A pilgrimage In English it's a pilgrimage um, and now, Hajj Shay, Umrah Shay. Hajj is something, Umrah something. Umrah is that has some of the everything that you do in Hajj. So, sorry, everything you do in Umrah, you're doing Hajj, but Hajj is a few more actions, but they're different. So, Umrah can be done in two hours. Two, okay, three hours. Yeah, it's very easy. You go to Mecca. What do you do? You do Tawaf. You do Tawaf to Mecca. You do Tawaf around um, uh, Jazakallah Khair. You go to Mecca. You land in Mecca. I'll do it. Don't worry about that. In fact, let's, let's just, just to break it down, the difference between Umrah and Hajj. And many of you know this, don't worry, inshallah, but we're all here to learn. Even for myself, it reminds me. You land in Saudi, um, You Before you get to Mecca, you, you'll go to something called the Miqat, a particular place where you start your, your Umrah. You, you, you get into the state of being in, in Ihram, and then you make your intention to fall into Umrah, to do Umrah. You go to, the, you go to the, uh, Mecca, you go to Mecca, Al-Haram, you do tawaf seven times. Tawaf seven times. You go around the Kaaba seven times. After that, you can pray two raka'at in front of Maqam Ibrahim. And then you do sa'i. You go back and you go, you go back and uh, forth. And then you shave your head and salamu alaykum. It's basically done. And when you go to so anyone who's been there and done it, you're surprised how they cut your hair, it's so quick, yeah, I need to get some shampoo, they wet your whole hair, they have to, in two seconds you're finished, gone, salam alaikum. One time they cut my head, even the white stuff out of my brain was coming out. So it's ajeeb, not my brain, but yeah, and the white flesh of my head, it's like, oh, so sad, the rajal, my head bleeding. But I said, inshallah, Allah's forgiven me, we ever done something haram, I don't know. So, so, now I said to him, put more water, you need to put more water in my head, Sheikh. He's not giving me no water, I said, you have to put water in my head to shave it. He's putting on you a little bit of water. So, it's 15 riyal. So now, but the shahid is that with Hajj now, Hajj is more. Hajj, you have to go to Muzdalifa, Mina, uh, you have to do Tawaf, you have to throw the Jamarat, the rocks, you have to slaughter. So there's a few more things, but they're different. But the thing is, is that when you do Hajj, there's different types of Hajj. Some Hajj, before you start your Hajj, you can do Umrah and things like that. So there's a few changes, but Umrah and Hajj, very similar. Hajj is about five days. Um, there's a few different things you do, but inshallah, if you go over a tour guide, it'll be very easy, or even just follow like a course online. Hajj is very easy, inshallah. Um, so, naam. now, some ulama they say even Umrah is wajib if you can do it, but Hajj is a pillar from Al Islam. Um, so, naam. Hajj is a pillar of Islam, and um, if a person has the ability to do Hajj, they should try to do Hajj, inshallah, because Hajj is not easy. Hajj is not, hajj, not, not that it's not, that it's, it's not pain, it's not impossible, but some people they think I'm going to work my entire life and then I'm going to get to 65 and do Hajj. Doing Hajj at 65, there's no problem. But you want to do Hajj when you're able bodied. It's not, it's a, you don't want to do Hajj when you're old and people are pushing you and you want to do it able bodied, do you understand? But obviously, this is on the account of you being able to do it. This is, if you don't have no money, then you don't do it. You don't. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa. So if a person is able to do it, then let him do it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Naam. Yeah. Oh, so once you do one hajj, every other hajj you do is considered sunnah. Meaning that it's not wajib for you, it's not wajib anymore. Meaning that first hajj is, is hajjul faridah. It's the hajj that if you don't do any other hajj, khalas, there's, no, there's nothing upon you. So nah. nobody, none of your family have to do Hajj on your behalf or anything like that. Nah. Yes, I'll, um, you do Hajj, uh, Umrah during the month of Ramadan, 
Yeah, it's equivalent to doing Hajj. But yeah, it's so so it's equivalent to Hajj in reward. Only in reward. So it's equivalent to the Hajj, but it, it, it doesn't take away. It's, it doesn't technically mean that you've done Hajj. No, no. It's like, for example, someone saying, um, "Is it a Surah al? Uh, where is it? Surah al? Um, um, what's Surah al Ikhlas? Was it Thuluth al Quran? Is it Surah al Ikhlas? Right? Yeah. That is a third of the Quran. It doesn't mean now, for example, somebody here is reading all of the Quran. And then you say, Manana, mashallah, qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. And then you walk out the masjid and you think, no, he's getting more hasanat. It means in reward. In reward, it's, it's equal in reward. But remember, even when it comes to reward, Allah can give you more reward. Uh, sorry, Allah can multiply your reward. So you've read Surah Al-Ikhlas. It's like reading a third of the Quran. But this person has read more than Surah Al-Ikhlas. So his reward is maybe he, it's as if maybe he's read the Quran maybe a thousand times. You kind of understand. So naam. So it doesn't mean now that on technical things. So naam. So on the point of technicality, if you do Umrah in Ramadan, it doesn't mean you've done Hajj and that that, that Hajj, hajj is, is no longer wajib upon you. No, it means that you've gained the reward. So you've got the same reward. Naam. Mm-hmm. The Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata' minkum al-ba'a, fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghadu lil-basar wa ahsanu lil-farj." The Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, "Oh, young assembly of youth, whoever is available, uh, who from ever, whoever from you is available to get married, then let him marry. Fa innahu aghadu lil-basar. It's going to help you lower your gains. Wa ahsanu lil-farj." It's going to help your private parts as well. You're not going to do anything crazy when you're young and you're not married. You're going to do something crazy. And they said, what the Prophet Allah didn't go into after that. لم يستطع فعليه بالصوم. Whoever's not able to, let him fast. فإنه له وجاء. Because it's going to be a shield for him. Now who can fast? Ten, two, it's difficult to fast 365 days of the year because you're not married. What's the solution? If a person is able to marry, let him marry. Marriage, Allah will bring rizq. Allah will bring awlad. Allah, Allah will bring more, more, you know, Allah will bring, give you rizq for your awlad, for your children. Responsibility. The more responsibility you get, the more mature you become. Marriage has several benefits. If a person is able to get married, if a person is unable to, excuse me, if a person is unable to get married, then لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Then if you're not able to do that, but نعم, if a person is able to get married, let him think about getting married. Wallahi, your your trajectory in life will go up if you get married. Your, the way in which your outlook on life will become, you'll become more mature, everything, if you, if you get married. So I, I, I would say if a person's able to get married, he has the financial capacity, his family will support him, so on and so forth, let him get married. It's a problem. Because if you're single for too long, it's another problem. Then, then you get to 29, 30, 31, 32, 30, and then you start becoming scared of marriage, and then you just become a bachelor for your whole entire life. So you have to hit the eye when it's hot. Yani. Nah. There's nothing to be afraid of, your rajl, you have the quwa, al-rijah quwa moon, so you, you, you know, the sahib rajl, naam, I know, naam, you should want to get married, you should want to get two, three, four, if we live in the Muslim country, but what can you do, you can't do anything, some people they go to different countries, I'm like, that's, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, 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 inshallah, any other questions? Mm. What advice would you give us regarding seeking knowledge in this country and the way Seeking knowledge in this country, I mean, when it comes to seeking knowledge, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمُ Indeed, knowledge is by making an effort to learn. So, any place, whether you're here, whether you're in any part of the world, when it comes to trying to learn your religion, then you should always try to learn from the people in your local area first. So learn from your local teachers, learn from you know, people that you, who have the classes going on. And then once you exhaust that, you can move on to different towns, to different countries. And alhamdulillah, because of the internet, there's many, many ways a person can learn knowledge. I personally would advise if, you want to, if somebody wants to be serious, to try to learn the Arabic language. And then the Arabic language is a miftah, it's a key, miftah al-ilm. And then from there, you can learn and, you know. So now, if a person can learn the Arabic language, that's a good thing. And if not, 
And listen, listen to classes, read books, attend lectures, attend uh, duroos, muhadarat. There's many things a person can do in this country, inshallah. It's getting better. In the UK, it's getting much, much better, alhamdulillah, in comparison to how it used to be. MashaAllah, ask the elders here. The UK is, the Islamic presence in the UK is getting better and better, inshallah ta'ala. So, alhamdulillah, there's khayr, there's barakah, inshallah. But now, to learn, to learn, to, to make a conscious effort, effort to learn. So now, but Sheikh, you're from a city of knowledge. He's from a city of, of, of a lot of ulama and, and scholars. So alhamdulillah. But I know he's asking for everyone. So try to learn the Arabic language. Try, try to memorize Quran. Try to, um, what do you call it? You know, learn as much as you can and ask those people who have knowledge to guide you in the correct direction. Inshallah ta'ala, you will. You'll get there, inshallah ta'ala. Now, do we have any any other questions, inshallah ta'ala? Yes, Sheikh. Sheikh, is it possible to attain highest level of piety with ignorance? Oh, good question. Is it is it possible to gain a very high level of piety with ignorance? Can you be a person with no knowledge and gain a very high level of piety? Well, yeah, you can, because in the sense where... Knowledge is one way of gaining of, of gaining piety. There's many abwab of taqwa. Some people's bad ba meaning doors. There's many doors to taqwa. Some people can fast. Some people can give sadaqah. Some people can do al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. They enjoy the good, they forbid the evil. Some people, they're very strong with ibadah. Some people, they're very strong when it comes to seeking knowledge. Of course, of course, 100%. If a person has taqwa, his piety and he has knowledge, it's a bonus. However, as for saying that a person cannot get to a very high level of taqwa except with ilm, then of course with a very he needs to have some level of ilm. He can't have no ilm because if you have no ilm, you're gonna be doing things which are jahil or jahl or things which are forbidden. So you need to have a certain level, you need to have a qadr min al ilm. You need to have some type of knowledge, you need to have some level of ilm. Some type of knowledge. You don't have to have a high amount of knowledge, but kayfa you salli, kayfa you zakki, kayfa you soom, kayfa you hujj. He needs to know al ma'loom, al ma'loom min al dini bil darura. He needs to know the clear, essential parts of his religion. And then, inshaAllah ta'ala, from there he can gain, inshaAllah ta'ala, a high level of, what do you call it, piety. But if you look at the Sahaba, the best Sahaba, yani they had ilm. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had ilm, Umar had ilm, uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu had ilm, and Ali radiallahu anhu had ilm. Mr. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Aqda ummati Ali. The one that's the best at judging in my ummah is Ali. Okay? So, nah. So, all those people had ilm. The best of them had ilm. And um, even there's even a hadith, for example, uh, of Salman al Farisi and Abu Darda. Abu Darda was a companion. He was a um, he was a Ansari. He was one of the people of Medina. He would work. He would do Qiyamul Layl. He would do so much, and then he would be so fatigued, so tired. And then Salman Salman al Farid she said, you know, um, you know, your badan alayka haqqan wal jasdu alayka haqqan wa kada alayka haqqan. Give and you know everything has a right upon you. Then he said, fa'ati kull the haqqin haqqa. Fa'ati kull the haqqin haqqa. Give every single part of your Body is right, you know, don't do Qiyam layl all night and then after you can't wake up for Fajr. Don't give Sadaqah all the money away, you don't have no one to help your family. Give everything is right. So even sometimes, like you said, if a person is so pious, he has no knowledge, he can sometimes even destroy himself. So you need to have Al-Qadr, Al-Wajid, min Al-Ilm. You need to have a, at least a certain level of knowledge. Inshallah Ta'ala, he'll be from Ahl Al-Taqwa, Inshallah Ta'ala. Naam. Yes. So uh, Iman isn't the same as Islam. So uh, it's like uh, it's all every woman is Muslim, but not every woman is Muslim. Mm. We mean in when I say that Iman is different from Islam in a technical sense. From an istilahi perspective, they mean different things when they're mentioned in different uh, when they're mentioned in the same sentence. So for example, the hadith Jibreel uh, 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 Jibreel said, "Akhbini an al-Islam." Prophet gave him a particular 
answer. Then we say, Akhbarni an al Iman, gave him a particular answer. So when it comes now to um, a, a Muslim, now there's levels of Iman. So every Mu'min is a Muslim. Yes, every believer is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a believer, like you said, because a believer, to be a believer, is a, is a high status. You have to have a high level of Iman. Qalatil Arabu Amanna, the Arab said that we believe that we are that we believe. What did Allah say? Because Iman or the state of being a mu'min has not yet entered your heart. So now, do we have any other questions, insha'Allah ta'ala? Any other questions about Islam or about the topic or anything before we wrap things up? Okay, okay, so now quickly, insha'Allah ta'ala. <clears throat> if they do, they can, if you've got pen and paper, quickly write it down or something. Nothing? Nothing, huh? Okay, insha'Allah ta'ala. نكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بارك الله فيكم